Welcome back, everyone. It is week two of Python. We are on Wednesday on our calendar here. We are going to go over uh, MySQL, and we're continuing our lesson from yesterday. Okay. Um, and today, as we said at the end of the day yesterday, we are going to be dealing with queries. Before I begin today's lecture, let me show what the end of the day goal is as far as assignment so that we know where this lecture is going in direction as far as what I'm teaching us. What, what's the point of today's lecture? It's to be able to get us to finish this assignment, okay? When we're able to complete this assignment, we know that we have understood the point of today's lectures. So the point of today's lectures is to uh, play with the database that we would have created, the schema, and insert into our tables values, right? Yesterday, we discussed what the database is in our uh, analogy uh, of an app, right? We have the front end, the back end. We've created uh, front end during Web Fun. We're uh, now able to use a back end that's able to take in uh, information from the front end and give it to the front end and also uh, distribute it to what we have now called session, which is this um, like a ticket that holds our current order of what we are dealing with. Now we have then the final piece, which is the database, which we said is a place of storage, place where the data lives. And we are going to be uh, needing to save our data somewhere. We're not going to save it in our server as we have been putting objects in our server. There's That's the blueprint for a template for where and how we're going to save data. But we're going to be dealing with our uh, MySQL uh, server or, or back, uh, database, excuse me, MySQL database in order to interact with information. So that means we're going to be inserting information, pulling out information, deleting information, editing information, just like anything in life, right? Anything has something of a CRUD functionality, right? When when I worked at a deli, I had a refrigerator that I had to pull in uh, frozen chickens out of. So that's uh, selecting from and taking out, right? Or inserting into. So let's, let's think of our database as something that we're going to have to either uh, populate with data, edit data inside, pull data from, or uh, delete, okay? And this goes back to what the heart of each app actually does, right? Let's look at our calendar just for a second to think about what we're, what does this lead to? What does this lesson lead to tomorrow? It leads to Flask plus MySQL and using uh, these uh, uh, this acronym here, CRUD. So what does that acronym stand for? Uh, anyone in the chat want to type it in for me? What does CRUD stand for? Uh, how about this? Let's go slowly here. Cite, type me a personal message in the chat. Don't type, uh, don't type it for everyone else to see. Tell me in chat, all right, send me a message. If you click that everyone button, find my name. All right, what does the C in CRUD stand for? Oh, okay. I see some, some good answers. <laughs> Vincent, I thought you were a student. He said cookie. It doesn't stand for cookie. Now we know what Vincent's thinking about. It stands for create, right? And so today's lecture, I'm gonna be going over these four tabs that you see on the right hand or the left hand side. Hold on, I'm trying to highlight this here. Give me a second. Um, here we are. Okay, you're gonna work for me tablet. Here we are. Okay, so I am dealing with mainly these four modules here. Select, insert, update, and delete. 
this is all I'm going to be covering because this is all we really need to know for this morning's lecture. Now, there are what we have called join tables and 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 uh, figuring out information through something called joins. Uh, we're going to deal with this in the afternoon lecture. So there's no need for us to learn about how to do this. We're going to keep it simple. We're just going to be learning about select, insert, update, and delete. Okay. When we when we have a grasp of how to do these, then we are now able to do the CRUD functionality on our database. All right. So let's match these up. This should be fairly simple enough, right? So I said. Uh, what was a C? And most of you all said create, right? So create is what we have here. Let's uh, let's match this up with what one of these uh, values are here. Which one would it be? Pretty easy, I know. But let's match them up because it's not in the same order. Which one is this? What does C correspond to here? Insert. Yeah, so this value here, insert, is what this C stands for, all right? When you have all four down, then you have all the uh, infinity stones, okay? You're able to create the, the CRUD app. So let's, let's match the values. The first one is insert, okay? Insert. So it looks like insert is actually second in line for us to learn here. So insert, we're going to learn second. All right, now send me in the private chat here, what does the R stand for? Okay, pretty good, pretty good. I like that you guys are responsive. Yes, there's no need to doubt. It is for read. Yes, R-E-A-D. <clears throat> and so, Looking on our left-hand side here for our lesson plan for the day, what does now the R in uh, CRUD or read correspond to in our options below? I mean, there's only one select, right? You guys are getting this pretty easy. Select, right? So we are gonna be going over the select first, okay? So we're gonna be going over read and then create just so we have an order of what we're doing here. All right, so we're going to be learning about the read first. Oh, actually, they're going to be going hand in hand, create and read, because as soon as we create something, we're going to want to read it, and we're going to read our, our table before we create anything. So they go hand in hand. And so we're going to be learning about these first, create and read, and then we're going to close out the lecture with the, with the uh, last two uh, infinity stones here. All right, so the, the last two are update and delete. All right, update. And I mean, obviously that's gonna be update and then delete is gonna be delete. So no need to guess there. Okay, so create, read, update, and delete. If your app can do this, it's a CRUD app. And so, in order for our app to do this, we need to be able to do uh, CRUD on our database. We need to create, read, update, and delete on our database. And so that's the focus of today's lecture, as I've stated. Okay, now let's continue. I said we were gonna do the select first. So let's go there in the module. Okay, in case we're having trouble finding where we are. I'm going to paste this in the chat. And again, you guys are uh, targeting me in the, in the direct messages here. So if you guys have a question, focus it to the everyone now in case uh, you have a question that needs to be answered. And I'm talking, and I don't actually see your comment. OK, so now that we are good there, now we need to open up our MySQL application here. Okay, I'm going to start at home base here. It looks like this when we get started, right? We can all follow along or we can just um, rewatch the recording and, and follow along there. There's no need to do it, but if you want to, here I am. 
All right, here's the MySQL workbench. And since we have a pretty simple lecture today, I know I said we were only going to be dealing with uh, create, read, update, and delete, but I want us to do a little recap of yesterday as well. So we have some practice coming in. How do I go from here, from, from this landing page, to actually seeing one of the databases and inserting and you know doing all the things what we said we would do, uh, create, read, update, delete. How, let's let's guide me now. I, I want some direction from you guys here, either in the chat or out loud. Guide me to create a simple um, a dojo table or or a simple uh, dojo database that has a that holds a table for uh, ninja values, right? A table of ninjas. All right, so something like what we did yesterday, just slightly different. So guide me here, somebody. What's the next one? Click local instance and put in password. Ah, okay. So if I click here and put in password, oh, very good. I was about to follow your wrong direction there, Brooke. But yes, he said the right answer. Create model the three boxes, the three boxes thing. Yes. So we're starting a fresh database from scratch. So let's create one from scratch before we do our CRUD functionality. Here I have some schemas pre-made. I'm going to make a new fresh one here. Add a diagram. Oh, sorry, I'm getting ahead of you guys. Tell me now what to do. All right, I'm backing off. What can I do at this point? Add a diagram. Oh, okay, but what else could I do? What else could I do? Name DB and add diagram. There we go. All right, Brooks is on it. So here I can change the name before I start adding the table, and it's convenient to do so. So this one I'm going to name uh, Super Dojo because I don't have one named yet that. Am I talking like Yoda? It, Yes, we don't have one name like that yet. Okay, all right, Super Dojo. Here we are. Now we have our uh, schema named. So now we click Add Diagram. There we go. Fair enough. Yes, that's the obvious answer. Now, okay, let's let's. Uh, I'm gonna take my hands off the wheel here until you guys tell me what's the next step. You guys, I know it's a little hard to describe, but um, you know, give me a. a Add a table, add a table, okay. And where is the button here, more or less, of where to add the table? It's gonna be the one There's under- the mesh, mesh looking box. This one here, right under the tree, right? Where it says- No, right no, yeah, this that one. one. Yes, under yeah. this one, under this one here. Okay, there we are. Thank you. I click in here, I, I click the box, I click in the white space, and now I have this, little blue rectangle here. Okay, what's the step from here now? Then you kind of name your table. Like All right. World. How do I do that? Double click to edit. Uh, double click, yep. Yeah. Yes. All right. So now we called our schema name Super Dojo. I'm going to just call this one Super Ninjas. Super Ninjas. Okay. Um. And so here I have my table named. Now, what's the next step? Add ID, it's very so, nice. Yeah. Go ahead, sorry, Hakeem. Uh, Valerie, you said add ID. No, 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 I'm trying to say the same thing, yeah. Okay, and how do I do that? I did something there. What did I do? I'm gonna change the... Uh... Yeah, the name. Okay. A so when I, when I initially click in the column here, sorry to cut you off, Hakeem. When I click in the column here, it automatically creates a default name here, ID Super Ninjas. But I need to do a little bit of editing here. Let's just switch it to ID. And so now that I have the column name, ID as it properly should be named. What's the next step? Then you check the AI box. 
Yeah. Auto increment. Okay. And what does this mean again? Auto increment. So it means whenever we create a new value in our table, it will automatically increment the number of the ID as we add new values. So the first value we would enter in would have the, the ID number one. All right. And then by default, we don't have to add the IDs of uh, the rows in our table. We just add the content and the ID would automatically be added and it knows what to put in because it's going to increment from the last number, auto increment. Okay, that's what we um, see that as. All right, and there's a couple other values checked, but we won't do a super quiz here. It's not a test. Let's just move on. All right, so I want to then, now that I have an ID, I want to make this a really simple schema, a really simple table. We're not going to add more than one table. Uh, I want to add a column name called first name all right so someone guide me here where do i click more or less you click where click to edit okay and here's where i will enter in the name uh first name all right what does this bar chart here mean? What is that telling me? 45. You can only have 45 characters. And and uh, uh, that means they can use uh, uh, the string and... Yes, a string of at least 40, uh, of at most 45 characters uh, will be the, the type of data that we should expect here for first name. All right, uh, and I think I think with that, I think maybe I'll just add a last name now that I've already click, clicked in here. Last name, and do I select any of the check boxes for any of these values here? No. No. Because it's not necessary. These are only for, at least so far, we've only learned that the ID has primary key checked, it cannot be null, and that it's gonna auto increment. And that's standard for a key. Now we have two values in our table, first name and last name. And this is all I want for my database. And this is all I want for this table, in fact. Uh, so now that this is created, do I need anything else to be done before I go move on to the next step? Do you need to add, create it at, and yep, and update it at? Yes. Yes. Great catch. Okay, so I'm going to add two more columns called created at and updated at. All of our tables need these values. These are going to be super important and very standard for us to write in. Okay, so the first one is going to be called created at. And this is going to be telling us what exactly when when this uh, row of data of first name. I'm oh, sorry, did I just click over last name? Yeah, I'm sorry, that, that was a mistake. So I'm gonna go to a column below and say created at. And this is gonna be uh, telling me when this row of data of ID, first name and last name was uh, initially created. Right, so what's the data type here? Date time. Date time. Excellent. No. Now, what am I missing? The default expression. Default expression. Brooks, I see your hands raised. Yeah, actually, for this one, I um, I in the same. Okay, sorry, <laughs> start that over. So for the default value for this one. I found out that you can just do like double click and then click default current timestamp for created at instead of now. But I just wanted to double check if that was correct or not. Like instead of writing now with the parentheses, you can actually just like if you click out of that completely and then just click that line one time instead of double clicking it. Yeah, yeah see the first one default current timestamp and then same thing for the last one, but the last option. Once mm -hmm. you create it, you you have to make updated at. 
Yeah. So this one, then you say, uh, well, okay. have to be I'd have to make it. I'd have to make it. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's a question for any fellow instructors. I, I'm not going to answer that one. Um, any of the Tylers have an input for this one, Vincent? Is yeah, this that's good. Is equivalent to just saying now, writing in now with the parentheses? Yeah, to my knowledge. Okay. Okay. We just found a, a, a an alternate way to do something. Uh, and thank you, Brooks. So nice job finding that. What we want to know is that there is something that has to be here. Whenever we do a created at and updated at, okay, we need a value here in the default expression. Okay, we just found that we can do one of two things. We can either say now, just like this, okay, insert into the default expression uh, now with uh, cap all caps and then parentheses following just like so. Or we just learned through Brooks that we can do this, right click and then say default current timestamp. Okay, current timestamp. Let's experiment with this here. And so then the next step would be, uh, let's uh, get some direction here. What's the next step? Almost there, created at, there we go. Uh, updated at, sorry, updated at. And then we switch this to date time as well. And then we can also say default current timestamp on update current timestamp right there. Oop, mouthful. Current timestamp on update current timestamp. There we are. Okay. So we enter these expressions by first entering a column name, selecting the right data type, and then we can go into the default expression, right click in here. So I want to experiment with this here. I haven't used this yet. All right. So we have this now that we have our created at and updated at, we're almost at the final point where we're ready to uh, create something out of this. This The blueprint is now ready to be uh, utilized. So what's the next step? Next step, anyone? Do we recall from yesterday what we do to make a database? Oh, no, no. Save, it. save it that's a good step let's do that before we continue file save save model as and i'm gonna just call this one super dojo okay save and then what's another step here that what we wanted to do we'll go to the uh database on the top of the okay yep see here database i click in and then what's the next one forward engineer okay and that takes me to this window what do i do from this window when you click continue okay now what um drop object before yeah. each create object here we are and then we click continue and then because I'm on a Mac, I'm gonna enter my super long password. It should be just root if you're on a PC, root, root if you're on a Mac. So I've entered that in. Do I see anything here I need to click before I continue? No, continue. Okay, and now I am here. What do I do from here? Continue. All right. Okay. And so what is this telling me now? Successful, right? No problems. Everything went according to plan. So what do we do now? We're almost there. We just need to get here and then I'll start talking. Then you close the page, then go to home. Okay, click that home button. All right. Then the database, the dolphin icon. Okay. And then take me where my next step is here. Then the local instant. Okay. 
All right. And now that I've created it, how do I go into it and see it? Refresh. Excellent, James. All right. So now I click refresh. And here it is. Super Dojo. So you notice here, there's a difference. See how this one has a uh, Super Dojo emboldened compared to its neighbors here. When you click into, when you double click a, a database schema here, it's going to uh, give a special highlight. Uh, so just be careful and aware of that, okay? Because it has some functionality to it and we're gonna see that in a second. So I've selected my Super Dojo database. Brooks, I'm looking here. You said to click which thing when you're forward engineering drop schema. Yeah, drop schema, yes. Okay, so we see here Super Dojo, and now we're in it. We've selected it, so it's being highlighted. We see it's bold. Now, if we want to see the table we created, we click this drop down for tables, and we hover over Super Ninjas. When we hover over Super Ninjas, the, the table that we created, if we see all the way to the right, there's this uh, table grid icon with a gray lightning bolt to the top right of it. I know it's a uh, miniature here, but we're gonna click it. And what that does is give us our first query, select, right? So this is the what in CRUD. R, like a pirate, all right? This is the R in CRUD, this is read. This is trying to read, yes. So this is trying to read from our table. And what we're seeing below is the result. Here, it's all null. ID is null, first name is null, last name created at. There's no values in this table. Although this table is ready to have values inserted into it, there's nothing there that's going to be a given as a default value. All right, so we've now gotten to this step. Now it's time for me to show uh, some of these queries here. We're gonna start inserting into our table so that we can start reading from it, right? So we said we're gonna go over each of these. All right, and so here we have our very first example of what an insert looks like, right? So remember, we're doing CRUD and we are going to now do a create. So insert, create. So insert now, we see here. And the syntax that we see here for this uh, insert, we're gonna follow very closely. It's not gonna be exact because our table is different from the one we see here, but we're gonna follow this very closely. And we're gonna to have to know exactly where to put this line and how its value is gonna help us, what, how to activate it in order to get it running. Okay, so I'm gonna take a screenshot of this here so that we can have something to follow uh, as we move to MySQL. All right, but before I start doing any uh, CRUD functionality, stuff and start putting stuff into the, to the database. I want to take a poll. How well do we understand how to create a schema and from a schema move to a database? Okay. And I think these numbers are much better than yesterday now. So a lot of the time when I'm doing a lecture, I'll kind of go over the big picture. I'll hit every detail on the way. And um, then I'll even find some bugs. So apologies if it's hard to follow along with the main point of what I'm trying to do. But I, I do want to emphasize here um, that what we're doing is how it is how to insert into a table now so that we can fulfill 
that basic CRUD functionality, which relates to what we're doing for our app, right? So insert into table, and we have an example here. So let's take this example and go back to our MySQL. And we have it here. Let's see how to insert into our table. All right, so again, we're, uh, let me just write it here. So we're focused. Right now we are doing the create. Okay. And so let's insert into our table. The first value we see here is to use that word insert. So let's do that. Let's erase what we have here. This is where we're going to do our queries, as you can already see. It's already here. We're going to just delete what's here and say our keyword insert, all caps, I-N-S-E-R-T. And then following space into all caps, I-N-T-O. And then we find the name of the table. Now, I want us to uh, be careful here because this is going to come out differently depending on which one we have highlighted. All right. So right now we have this, this super dojo schema highlighted. And we know it's highlighted because it's uh, bold and white, right? Slight difference from its neighbors, but you have to see it. And this is going to make a difference as far as what we're inserting here in our query. We have to insert the proper table name. So I know my only table here is Super Ninjas. So I'm going to say Super underscore Ninjas. And I need some values of what I'm going, well, before I have values, I'm going to say insert into Super Ninjas. I want you to put in here into the columns specifically. And I have to name the columns, as you can see here. You're going to name the column of uh, the data that you're going to insert into the table. All right. And so what? What do we know about our table right now? What values do we need to uh, worry about inserting as far as how our table works and how it looks? What values, can you tell me in the chat? What values do I need to have here to worry about to insert because I have what how many columns one two three four five columns right I have ID first name last name created at, updated at so what are the two or what are the columns that I should be giving values to as I see here in this in this example ID first name and last name good guess first and last name I see another guess so there's a couple of options I see from the chat, but let's clear up any confusion we have now. When we selected auto increment for ID, it, anytime we create a value, a default value is gonna be inserted into ID. So if we insert a first name, last name, it's gonna give ID an automatic value. So we don't actually need to worry about ID, okay? We don't actually need to worry about ID. We are gonna give these two here, first name and last name. And then we have the last two created at and updated at, okay? Do I need to insert these also created at and updated at? No. And why not? I'm seeing some no's in the chat. Why don't we have to, why, why would you guess that we wouldn't have to put those in? 
default Does expression it automatically generate like the the timestamp yes yes when we created the table and we put in the default expression current timestamp on uh created at and then update at current timestamp in the updated at that covered us having to insert that into our table manually so that means that the system is going to take care of that for us all we need to really worry about are these two here first name and last name okay so we're going to do these two first name and last name so let's go ahead and put those into our table first name and last name i mean sorry into our columns here where we're supposed to put in our values so first name comma last underscore name all right so we now have the first half of our insert finished we have our columns that we want to insert into our table what's the next part well obviously it's going to be the lower half but let's let's go ahead and fulfill what we need to do here okay so values all caps after the parentheses all right give it a space then you say values and what i want to say now is put in here the parentheses the two values i want to have for first name and last name so i'm going to give some random values for first name um bob bob for first name and last name someone give me a last name here bob uh bob ross <laughs> bob ross perfect brooks all right there we go bob ross all right so insert into super ninjas first name and last name values bob and ross all right now that we have this line completed we need to run this line and now that's what we're going to focus on but before we do that i want to show a slight difference here in how to do it so here we see a lightning bolt and a lightning bolt with a cursor on it either of these would work for me right now but i want to explain the slight difference before i start running this the lightning bolt is going to cover the whole entire, uh, every single line available. Do you see how I only have one line, line one? Well, I can insert more than one insert here. I can say, you know, insert, uh, you know, again into Super Ninjas, this stuff with a different value. And this would be line two. And, and, and it would just follow each line, line by line, as many as I would have. That's what the this lightning bolt does. The, the the one without a cursor on it. The one with a cursor on it is only going to run the line that you have highlighted. I only have one line and it's the only one, so it's highlighted. So either one is going to work for me, but we just want to be aware of how these work in case we're having some frustrations in the future. Okay, so just be aware that uh, this one with the single cursor is going to do only the one I have highlighted. Okay, so I'm going to just run this lightning bolt now. And what do I see? I see here on the action output, a green check. And it says insert into Super Ninja's first name values, Bob and Ross. And now I see here one row affected. And so this, this has been successful. We have successfully now completed the C of CRUD. So we are, we are now Xing this off for now. Okay, we're gonna come back to it, obviously. We're not gonna be completely done with it, but we have finished one of four we have created. Now, how do we know, can, how do we know that we, well, uh, apart from what it's telling us there, that it successfully did it, how can we see the proof of this? Well, most of my questions are redundant. Or I mean, uh, rhetorical. Select, right? We want to read. So now we're going to go over 
the R. So we're going to do, yes, what I just saw in the chat by Mixi. We're going to select. We're going to select. So let's go ahead and peruse over to our select module. I'm going to then click here. And I'm going to go hover over to my select. OK, and it's pretty simple, as, as you can see. It's just for, for words. All right, so how we enter it in is by just, um, well, we can, we can insert a new line here. We can put a couple down. And let's take a look here at what a select looks like. We'll just have it to the left, like just as so. And we will say, select, and then what? does this mean? What? Why a star? Can anyone tell me what this may mean? Anyone have a guess? All. Yeah, that's what it means. The star means all. So select all. And then we use all caps again from this is going to tell us the table that we're looking to get um, information from and we'll say super. Oh, sorry. Make sure the capitalization's correct. Super underscore ninjas. Select all from ninjas. And one thing we want to always have completed here is semicolons at the end of our statement. As you saw there, it was giving me uh, some sort of uh, syntax error there. Super ninjas. Okay. this It's highlighting this, this red select and saying, um, Something's not right. We need something to be fixed. And the answer is, well, look for your semicolons. Make sure that they're at the end of your line. I'm going to add one here. That took it away from here. But just to be safe for the next line that I may create, I'm going to add another semicolon there. OK, always finish your lines with semicolons. All right, so now that I have two lines. I have the insert, and I have select all. I only want to run this one, right? I've already successfully inserted according to this here. Because I have a green output and it says I had no errors and I have one row affected now, then it's telling me you did it. So I don't want to reinsert right now. I just want to run the single line. So what did I say that we need to click at this point in order to see that single line ran? Remember that? Lightning bolt with the cursor on it. So I only want to run this one here. So let's do this lightning one with the cursor on it. OK. What do we see here? We see our table. And our table now has some values that are not null. Do we see that here? I know it's, I can't really uh, increase the font size of MySQL, can I? Let me check. Let me see. No, MySQL, it, it, it's set. <laughs> I, I don't really know how to increase the font size or the symbol size, so bear with us. Let me see if I can increase the window at all. Did that change anything? Yeah, that's that's better. Okay, so here we have our first row of data. This is what we inserted. And so now we have ID of one automatically created for us. The two values that we entered in here, Bob and Ross, this is what we gave here at these values. And the default values for uh, created at and updated at now and update at now. These are already created automatically for us. So we are good to go. We have now successfully inserted into our table. Okay. So we can say C R U D. And again, we're going to keep exploring these. But we have now created, all right, line one. We have red, line two. So now we have 
two more pieces of the puzzle and we have finished CRUD functionality. Now again, all of these go into much more detail, but in its simplest form, we have just done two of the CRUD uh, letters here, create and read. Now we have two more, update and delete, right? So let's go ahead, finish these out, do an update and delete. And once we finish these, we'll do uh, maybe one more read, okay? And uh, then we'll close it out. It'd be a real simple lecture. I want you guys to retain just the basic CRUD functionality when, when adding into um, our tables here, okay? Now there's obviously a lot more nuances that we're gonna have to cover and I'm gonna have to cover that in this afternoon's lecture as far as join tables, as far as where we can make mistakes, uh, where we can run into bugs when we're creating all these stuff. I've done it the perfect way. So if you run into an error, you know, you wouldn't really know how to pull yourself out unless you figured it out, right? But we have two out of two out of four. Let's move on to update and delete, and we will have finished our CRUD acronym. All right. So we know we know what update is, right? Because it's it's uh, just as simple as the word update. So let's look at our modules and go to update. All right. Now we have our first update. I'm going to just take a screenshot since it's a little wordy there. All right. Okay. All right, let me pull up the screenshot. Oops. That's not one. All right. Retry. Sorry. Here we are. All right. Got it. Uh, okay, here we are, here we are. Okay, so here's what I want to use as a um, base, but let's, let's continue before we dissect that too much on our MySQL here. So I don't wanna um, exactly delete these yet, so we said this was uh, create. This is, yeah, this is, um, this is read. And then we said we're gonna do update. And so let's go ahead and finish this out. So I want to insert that keyword there, as we see. Update, so all caps, update, and then I say the table name, Super Ninjas. And after this, uh, name of the table here, I need to say that next keyword set. Okay, do we see that here? After I say the table name, I give that set, capital S E T. Set, and then you have to say the column name. Uh, well, okay. What's the column that we want to affect of this table? Do we want to change the last name of Ross uh, or first name? Or maybe both. Let's start with the first name. Let's do one at a time. So what's, uh, okay, so we want to say value of the column. So set first name, make sure it's underscore, uh, Lowercase and then underscore here as we have it 
typed set first name equal equal to what? What's the first name we want to change to? From Bob to um, Rick, Rick Ross. Okay, now we have Rick. And what do we want to do now? We have one more thing to finish this update. We have a where, right? Because it's going to have to update somewhere specific. We want to update somewhere specific instead of update everything in general, right? That makes no sense. So we're going to take that specific value. We have to know that value is there and click, you know, set it and call the right column name. All right. And we're going to give that value Rick. And then we're going to say where. All right. So we need that value of location where all caps where and then the condition all right here's the final condition that we need in order to fulfill this update so here's where we want to say where let's say id equals one okay i i want to update first name of uh, this row ID. And it's gonna look here and say, you have only one and it's called one, sorry. Right? So this is where it's looking for this. For ID equals one. And so those there are what we need to match up. Okay, cause you can't just set first name to be Rick anywhere in any entry. That's not specific. That doesn't make sense. All right. So let's let's take a look on how we would uh, see this in action. All right. So I'm going to hover over this one. I'm going to say run this line only. And we have a success, as you saw here. Update Super Ninja set first name Rick, where ID equals one. Okay. So what do I want to do now in order to see my table? I want to read it, right? Easy. So I go over to this read line and I say, run it. And what do we have here? Bob is a new man. Well, he at least he just changed his first name. Okay, so now we have that first name updated to Rick where it was before Bob. All right, so now we see here how to update so we can cross off our acronym, the, the U, right? So let's, let's uh, do that now. I'm gonna say, C-R-U-D, and we're gonna check off three and we have one to go. All right, before we get to our last step of deleting an entry, I wanna just check to see with you guys how well we're understanding, how well we're following along. So I'm gonna set another poll here. How well do we understand how to update specifically? How well do we understand how the update works? Okay. It's looking good. I like the pull numbers so far. Appreciate you guys' feedback. It helps me uh, know what to say better. <laughs> All right. So we have an update, fantastic. I want to insert one more uh, entry here before I delete our one and only Rick Ross. We're gonna add one more value. Um, and I'm gonna add, I know a name. 
What's name? Tom Bombadil. Such a fun name to say. Okay, we have Tom Bombadil. I'm gonna add him into our table. Okay, everyone, and I just I just changed the values here. Only only the values. The line stays the same. What goes into the table here is now gonna change. So I'm gonna run another insert before I move on to delete. Okay, I'm gonna run one more insert. So I have this line highlighted. I'm gonna run this here. Click. And we have success, as we saw here. This is our sixth query. Insert into Super Ninja's first name and last name, Tom Bombadil. And now that that's completed, let's go ahead and run our read. Let's read what we have. We have two now in our table with an ID of one and two. Why did we have the ID of two? It's because auto increment. Auto increment knows that we have one entry already, so it added the second entry with an ID of two. And the created and updated at is accurate, right? 1209, that means we're almost done with our lecture. And we have our two entries. All right. Like I said, we have one more uh, letter in our acronym to go. Let's go ahead and throw that in there. This is the final step before um, we go ahead and close out today. We have the delete. All right. Last step is the delete. Let's go ahead and go there. Delete. Okay, now here it is. Simple line. Let's just pull it to the left. We don't have to screenshot anything. And we will follow the steps here. So the first word, all caps, delete. All right, we can follow that. Simple enough. All caps, delete. And now it's saying... Where do you want to delete from? Yeah, you have to be specific. From. So here, we've seen that same keyword, from. Read, you want to select from Super Ninjas, or do you want to delete from Super Ninjas? You have to say where, right? So that's the, that's the nice thing about, um, it's very readable. I would say my or SQL queries. It's very easy to understand what it's what it's telling us. So let's do that keyword from. So we're going to specify the location now from what? And then we have to say the table name. So what's the table name again? Same one we, we, we always use here, Super Ninjas. All right. So Super Ninjas. And then we have the second major keyword here, where. And as you notice, this is also on the update, All right? This is a condition. Do we want to just delete all, delete from Super Ninjas anything? No, we, 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 we want to delete from Super Ninjas and then we say our uh, specification where ID equals two. I just wanted to delete the second one. That's why I inserted it there. Okay, delete all from Super Ninjas where ID equals two. And what should this do? This should eliminate my second one here. So I want to X out the second entry. So this is what this delete should complete. Delete from Super Ninjas where ID equals two. So it should remove from our table. And after we delete it, we should only have one entry in our table, Rick Ross.
All right. So now we're here. We click in. We click the cursor. And we have a completed delete. Mixie, I see your hands raised. So quick question. Um, what's the difference between delete and drop? Does drop just removes the whole table and delete um, removes the record? Um, good question. I have not looked into drop yet, if I'm going to be honest. If another instructor wants to uh, pitch in here, I wouldn't mind. But I, I would have to look into that a little bit further before. I answer that. What, what, where are you seeing the drop exactly? Like as a command you can put into the SQL here, drop from table? Uh, I came across it when um, I was doing some searching. I don't, I don't remember where, but it says something about delete and I was just trying to get clarification on it, but. Yeah, let me double check that for you. I'll check in and I'll post that even on Discord here as I, as I find a better solid answer, but I'm not gonna make something up. So, um, yeah, let, let's, uh, let's look into that. I will. All right. But for now, all you need to know is this is what you have to do. Delete. And it's simple enough to remember, right? Because it's it, it delete is what we have as our CRUD word for our acronym D D for delete. Okay. I'll look into that. Thank you for the question, Mixie. Again, if another instructor wants to pitch in, don't hesitate, but what this does now is that it completes our acronym, right? So we have now done all four. We've created, we've read, we've updated, and deleted. Now, the only one I would like to emphasize a bit more is the read. Because when we create our apps, read is is the one that has a variety of versions to it. And what I mean is you can use read to read all, or you can use read to read one, okay? Sometimes you don't want all the values, right? You click on a page and you want to see all the users available. Sometimes you only want to see the one specific user, right? Like let's say a, 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 um, a social media website like um, Facebook, Instagram. When you click on someone's profile page, you're seeing information. You're reading information to that one specific user. You're not reading all the users available. You're not seeing your whole list of friends or of all the people available that have accounts. You're just wanting to see one at a time. So that there would be a read one, right? So we're looking here at a read one versus, oh, let's see my whole entire friends list, right? Or let's see every available user as an admin. That's a read all functionality. So what do we have so far? We have a read all. And how do we know that? It's because when we did our read, we had that star and we know that that means all. Read all from Super Ninjas. Okay. Now, what I wanna just close on is how to read one, okay? How do I read one? And it's very simple. We already have the syntax very much in here. What's the key phrase that we need in order to get something specific? Where, right? We needed to specify in order to do what the two letters of the acronym here. We needed to specify update and delete. All right, so that where is gonna give us some specificity, where ID equals two, where ID equals one. All right, so we're now just talking about read one before we close out. And so let's, let's do that. We're gonna say a second read statement in the read here. Select 
and we can say same same phrasing same select all from super ninjas and then we add the specification where id equals one okay so let's go ahead and run this line and see what it looks like. And it's giving me my table. Now at this point, my table only has one value, right? This, this, is, this is only one value in my table at all. The second one I deleted. So let's, let's show proof that this is working a little better, okay? I'm gonna add another value. I'm gonna add Tom Bombadil back into our table. So I'm gonna run this insert. I'm going to read the whole entire table now. So read all. So now <laughs> we have an ID of one for Rick Ross and uh, three for Tom Bombadil. Why did we go from one to three here? It's because we already had two created. Yes, we already had two created and we had deleted it. So it's just continuing on from where it knows it left off. So it's just adding more, it's increasing the, the numbers of the ID. It's not gonna read my current table to see, oh, what's the last ID that you have as a value? No, it's just gonna keep adding and incrementing by that number it has in its own count. Okay, so now we have a read all completed. So this is our whole table at this point. We have our table with these columns and rows. I said I wanted a specific view. So I want to see now only one row of the table where ID equals one. So I want to see only this entry. So I'm going to run that. I'm going to highlight it. Click the lightning bolt with the cursor. And what do we get? Just that one entry right here. One, Rick Ross, created at, updated at. Now, let me show what it would look like if I switch the ID so you guys can see that proof there. If I switch it to the other ID that I know exists in my table, three for Tom Bombadil, I run it, and there we are. Here is my other now example of a specific select, selecting by the ID. And as you can tell, I can select by other values as well. I can say where first name equals Tom, or where last name equals Ross. So if you select two, it's going to show nothing? I was just about to do that. Thank you for that question. All righty. Now, here is a scenario where we're looking for an ID that doesn't exist in our table, right? So I've now added that into our query. I'm going to run it. And what do we have? Well, we have an empty result. It is going to show us something that has a value there of two, which is nothing. There's no value of two. So it's going to say everything that you would have requested is an empty, empty bowl of nothing. Okay. Now, now that we've done this, we have really finished off our CRUD functionality. There's part one and two for uh, the read, but we have finished create. We've finished both reads. We've added an update and we have finished delete. So again, there's a lot more to this. There's some much more nuances, but let's just get the basics down, okay? We, if we master the basics and it, it, it's it's pretty easy to, once, once, once you have these lines written in, then you can just start adding to your tables. You can say, insert another Tom Bombadil and make him you know someone else. And then you add to your table, you select from your table, you, you uh, add values, play with CRUD, okay? Play with CRUD. Once you are able to create, read, update, and delete consistently, you have this, this uh, familiarity with uh, SQL syntax that doesn't go away. And you're gonna need that to continue tomorrow.
Okay. So these lines we're going to be writing in our app somehow in our Python code. But for now, we're just using them in this SQL, uh, MySQL uh, platform here. Okay. So play with CRUD and um, enjoy yourself. All right. Uh, let's run another poll. How well do we understand? Why doesn't the ID adjust? What do you mean by that exactly, Manjira? ID does adjust, doesn't. The ID to it, when the ID to is deleted. Oh, yes, because there's an internal count. There's an internal count as to the auto increment. It's incrementing by its own count that it has. It's not reading our table and seeing the last uh, value of the ID that's in there to see what's what's available as far as giving a new number to update. So, so it, yes, sorry. I was just going to say, so on that same kind of idea. So if you um, put in your own ID, <clears throat> would it eventually, like if you put it in like a six, once it got to six, would it replace that then? Sure. Let's check Auto it out. Incrementing. Let's give it a shot. So I'm going to say insert into Super Ninja's ID. And I'm going to give a value for an ID here. I'm going to say, what what number did you say? Six? Yeah. Yeah, but you could do it, any, any number. Yeah. Doesn't matter. yeah, just a higher number. I'm going to run this line. Okay. What do we see here? It's a success into... Insert into Super Ninja's ID, first name, last name, and then you gave that value six, Tom Bombadil. All right, so now let's run our read all. And now we have two Tom Bombadils, one with a ID of three and one with an ID of six. So you can manually insert the ID. Um, so yeah, so my question is, if you kept adding them without IDs now, once it got to six in its internal count, would it replace that one that you had manually entered or would there be an error like or something? The best thing I can do is to show you. So let's, let's go ahead and, and put them in. So I'm gonna go run this here. Uh, let's see, let's take a look. So the next one we added in, will go, from six to seven, isn't that, bit, isn't that a bit odd? So it, it it runs its internal count until you give it a new ID value, and then it'll say, oh, I'll count from that then. <laughs> so there is a bit of uh, finickiness to it, right? You have to kind of know the internal rules, but it's not super essential to know how the auto increment gives IDs. At this point, it's not going to give us so many errors. Only if we're trying to insert where an ID already exists, right? So let's let's try uh, in, insert into ID one here. Oh, sorry. ID and then one here. So let's try to insert a value of Pom, uh, Tom Bombadil where Rick Ross is, right? Let's see what happens in this case. I'm going to highlight it, run this line. Oh, we have our first error. Let's just pull this up. Duplicate entry one for Super Ninja. So it's saying there's already one with an ID one. You can't insert into something that already exists. You can edit something, update it, but you're not going to be able to set something that already has a value. Did that answer your questions there, Simon? Uh, yep, thank you. Okay, well now with that, I'm going to launch a poll. How well do we feel like we understand the, um, the read, read one and read all? All right, so now, we have then finished our morning session. I'll have this video up as soon as possible. Um, 
so long as I am able. So I will go ahead and work on that now as I uh, open up breakout rooms. And uh, you guys were great today, all right? I love the participation. You guys, I believe, learned a lot and uh, I'm enjoying you guys. So this afternoon, we're gonna continue on from this morning's uh, material and we're gonna learn about join tables. A little bit more complex. So I want you guys to have a good grasp of this and have some uh, play time with this before you go in. Don't go in blind to the next lecture, okay? Do some reading, even if you don't understand it, all right? So I'm going to be covering this material here, uh, joins, okay? I'm going to continue on from here. We're going to talk about tables and how those... Uh, schemas with tables that relate to each other with foreign IDs, how we could connect them when we're searching in our database, right? Because remember, this is a very simple table that we have here. It only has first name and last name. What happens when we have tables that have one to many or many to many, and we want to have, uh, we, we want to search our database for more complex information. We're going to have to learn how to join tables together to, to, to get information. We're going to be looking at this GIF, as you can see here, to make that work. Okay, but we won't talk about that yet. That's for this afternoon. So thank you all again for your participation this morning. I'll go ahead and end the recording at this point.